Father Stephen the Young, uh, you know, he he brings out this mysticism of meditating, trying to see a vision of God through ascetic practice and through uh, ascetic effort, trying to see a vision of God, and. And, and he says that that's what Paul saw, that Paul saw a vision of God and then was surprised that it was Jesus that he saw, right? He was shocked that when he, when he finally saw this vision of God, it was Jesus. And it was this light, right? And so there's this continuity of this vision of God. And um, when it says, uh, so there's this portion of the book on page 53, right? Um, and going through 54, right? Um, he details his own personal experience with God, and he recounts this um, to his spiritual father, right? And he says, I have seen, and the other says, what did you see, child? He says, light, oh my father, so sweet, so sweet, so much so, father, that my reason has not the strength to tell you. And while he is saying this, his heart leaps and pounds and catches on fire with longing for what he has seen. Then, with many warm tears, he begins to say again, That light, Father, appeared to me. The walls of my cell immediately vanished, and the world disappeared, fleeing, I think, from before his face. And I remained alone in the presence, alone of the light. And I did not know, Father, if this body was there too. I did not know if I was outside of it. For a while I did not know that I carry and am clothed with the body. And such great joy was in me and is with me now, great love and longing both, that I was moved to streams of tears like rivers, just like now you see. The other then answers, his spiritual father answers and says, It is he, child. And at this word he sees him again and little by little comes to be completely purified and purified grows bold and asks that one himself and says, my God, is it you? And he answers and says, yes, I am he, God, who for your sake became man. Behold, I have made you. And as you shall see, I shall make you God. Right? This powerful, uh, this powerful vision that, man, it, you can almost, it's, it's palpable. You know what I mean? The way that St. Simeon is, is talking about this, right? It's uh, it's palpable, and it seems so much similar to what we see in Paul. And the idea that this is an experience that we can have now, that beatific vision, right? The vision of God now. And what we have to do is purify our hearts. And what St. Simeon says is, hey, you must believe this is true, right? If you don't believe this is true, then you're not, then it's, then it's never going to happen, right? But you have to believe that he's, you know, this reminds me, um, he who comes to God must come, must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, right? I, I've been, I've been so uh, blown away by this, by this book, you know, um, his memoir, you know, this is this, this personal experience that he had for me was so impactful. And I remember literally again, dude, this, he is transforming the liturgy for me. I don't know how to ex describe it. I don't know how to explain it. Right. But I, when I went to like last, like last week, I was extremely moved by the liturgy because of what I've what I've been reading in Saint Simeon. And then this week, you know, today I go I go to liturgy and again I'm crying behind the altar, right? Serving and has this ever happened before? No. Why why is it suddenly that Justin is weepy eyed every time he serves in the altar? You know, that's not normal. That's not something. That's not that's not me. You know what I mean? And uh, I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, uh, Simeon's the the Holy Ghost is doing something in me. Um, that uh, I have a hard time explaining, and now I'm I'm live on the internet and I'm telling everybody, you know, 
and it's it's kind of awkward. But um, I don't know, man. What do you what do you think? I think that's. Um, I think that's ultimately where we should start understanding that the liturgy is something that is mystical. It is yeah. something that we experience. And if we don't, I think you were talking about um, one of your St. Macrinus uh, um, courses, you were talking about the experience of the liturgy as well, weren't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And St. Macrina course. And uh, you asked them, like, if you're not feeling this way and the liturgy is, there's something wrong. And it seemed like they, uh, your instructor said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't going to ask that question. Father Elijah was just like, yeah, something's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. I mean, and, you're, you're taking part in the, you know, the liturgy that's happening in heaven. Ultimately. Right. You know, it's a well, connection. Page 54. Right. Um I'm, I'm going to read just a little bit, and then I've, I mean, I've got a little note. When he has spent time in contrition, in weeping, in prostrations, and in humbling himself, he begins little by little to know the things of God. And it is when he has reached man. So he says... Um, and it is when he has reached this point that he learns his will, which is holy and acceptable and perfect, to repeat myself, if he were not to have seen him, neither would he be able to know him. And unless he knows him, how would he be able to know his holy will? If such is impossible with respect to humans, human beings, it applies all the more to God, right? If you have not seen God, you do not know God, is what he's saying. If you have not seen God, you don't know God. It's impossible for you to know God if you haven't seen him first. Right? And, you know, what hubris of, of me, I guess, I don't know, to, to, to think that, you, that, I could, that I could know God by 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 studying by 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 mere reading a lot you know what i mean um uh incredible hubris and 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 i wrote down this note here right cuz I, I i immediately i thought back to what he said what no eye has seen what no uh ear has heard what has never entered into the heart of man right and he talks about how this, this is the Eucharist, right? And then he says, don't be like the Jews who said, is this the son of Joseph? Is this the son of Mary, the carpenter's kid? This who, right? Is this the, is this the, the what, no eye has seen, what no is here, no has entered it. This, this, the way you see on the discos, right? What it is that we see in the chalice. But the truth of the matter is, I, I had written, I said, remember, you have seen God if you recognize him in the chalice, right? You have, and we have, we are, in, like, if we believe what the church teaches, right? If we believe this, and, and not, not some sort of cognitive assent, okay? But if, if our heart and our, and, our, and, our, and our minds are united, and we actually believe what the church teaches, about the Holy Eucharist, then every time my priest calls down the Holy Ghost to be upon us and to put you upon these gifts set forth, right? Make this body to be the precious body of your, uh, or make this bread to be the precious uh, uh, body of your Christ. Make this wine to be the precious uh, blood of your Christ, changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen, 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 right? <clears throat> every time that happens, you see a vision of God, right? It's real and it's palpable and it's powerful. And if you don't think you've seen God, 
you should not be taking communion. Because that's what it is. It's God. It says if you don't discern the body, the blood, right? If you don't discern it, you're drinking judgment on yourself. Yes. <clears throat> so. Oh, man. Sorry, I'm, I've got a, I've got, oh, burning, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, my heart's on fire right now, man. It's uh, something, something's different. You know, it's, something's different. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys have been in reading this throughout your week, um, oh. you might feel maybe a little more urged to, a little bit more just get on your knees a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of those types of reads. 